In this video tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate the Shadow 2 Photoshop action. So this is the uh, photo before the effect, and uh, this is what the action does. It basically just breaks apart your photo uh, into a lot of different pieces and spreads them out everywhere. Uh, and I'll also show you how you can uh, quickly move all the layers around in one go to create like a dispersion effect. So you can have all the parts shooting off in a particular direction. So that's really easy to do. Uh, a few more examples I'll just quickly show. Uh, this one here is actually combined with uh, another one of my actions called Architect. So the Architect action created uh, all these shapes, uh, all these glows and stuff, and then I just applied the Shadow 2 action um, on, you know, on top of this design and it created all these broken up parts. So um, just added a, another dimension to the design. Uh, again, this is combined with another one of my actions called Sundance. Uh, uh, you can see basically what that's done there. And this one was combined with my other action called Storm. Uh, so the storm action created the clouds and the lightning and all the light, light effects. And then uh, again just use the shadow action to create all these broken up pieces. So uh, it's really easy to use. It can really enhance the designs. I'll put a link to um, Storm Architect and Sundance uh, down in the description below so you guys can check that out. Uh, but let's get into it. I'll close these all down. And we'll start from here. Okay, so just a small checklist to go through before you play the actions, just to ensure you get no errors and everything goes smoothly. So looking into your layer panel, just make sure that your uh, your background layer looks identical to this. It should say backgrounds and have that lock symbol. So for those who have just opened up a photo and it doesn't say that, uh, what you need to do, I'll just set this up. So say for example, I've opened up this photo, it's called layer one or something else. Just go to layer, new, background from layer and that will just set it as the background. So you only need to do that step if your photo doesn't look identical to this when you open it up. Okay, still in the layer panel, go to this top right hand corner icon. Uh, the menu will be probably chopped off, you probably can't see it, but um, just scroll down and you'll see an option called panel options. Click on that and right down the bottom just make sure add copy to copy layers and groups is ticked. Hit OK, that's done. Uh, next, go to image mode, make sure your photo is in RGB color mode and 8 bits channel is selected. Uh, go to image size, make sure you're using a high resolution photo. You can see mine 1600 by 2500, 300 pixels per inch. Uh, the optimal range for all my actions is anywhere from 1500 to 4000 pixels. Just try to avoid using small um, photos my effects because the quality seems to sort of diminish a bit the, the smaller you go so just avoid any photos say under a thousand pixels okay that's that uh, need to load up the brushes that were included in the download so if we just hit B on the keyboard and you right click anywhere over the canvas you'll see you've probably got um, the default Photoshop brushes loaded up or whatever brushes, you, brushes you've been using so what we want to do is uh, replace all these brushes. So just go to this cog icon here, go to uh, replace brushes, and select the shadow 2 brushesabr file that was included in the download. And there they are there. So you'll need those for the action to work. So what we need to do now is uh, create a new layer. So go to layer, new layer. This must be called brush, B-R-U-S-H, all lowercase. If it is not spelt like that, then the action won't work at all, so that's very important. Click OK. So the idea with the brush layer is that uh, with that layer selected, what we want to do is fill in um, our subject, and that is going to be the area where the action breaks apart and shoots out into different directions. So um, for this design, I want to select this guy here. I want to select him, all of him. Uh, and whatever technique you use to quickly chase around subjects, just do that. Um, you know, you could use the 
magnetic lasso tool, lasso tool, any one of these three, you know, I could grab that and start drawing around the edges like that. Um, you could just grab a brush tool. If, if I had B, right click, I'll grab the soft brush. I always include a soft brush uh, in the brushes that are in the download, so it's just quickly, just quick access. You could just grab a, a brush and like, start brushing over your photo that way. You don't need to be too accurate with um, this action. Just the general area will do. Um, but just to save a bit of time, I'm just going to open up one that I've already traced around. Uh, it's this one. Yeah, so here I've got my brush layer. I just uh, traced around. You obviously don't need to be that perfect uh, with this action, but you can see what I've done there. So now I need to light up the actions panel. So go to window, actions, and uh, just click on this top right hand corner icon and go to load actions. Select shadow 2.atn and it will appear just here. Okay, uh, if you want to know uh, when you start playing the action, if you want an idea of how much uh, longer it's got to play back, just twirl this open, and you've got this scroll bar here that will go through all the all the commands. So I'm just going to click play. Everything's done. Actually, one thing just to make sure of before you play the action, just hit B. Uh, you get your brushes out and just make sure that the opacity of the brush is at 100%. If um if brushes are required with my actions, um, any action, just always make sure that uh, it's at 100%. Because if it's not, you could run into errors and it can affect uh, the result of the action. All right, I'm gonna click play. And it's probably gonna take anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute. So I'll just um, fast forward the video, get to the result and we'll go from there. Okay, the action's all finished and took about 45 seconds. Um, the speed of the playback will uh, be determined by sort of the specs of your computer and also the resolution of your photo. This photo was, say, over 4,000 pixels. It might have taken, you know, a minute and a half to two minutes. So just keep that in mind as well. All right, I'm going to just collapse all this and let's go into the layer panel now. So I've kept the brush light hanging around at the top. Set there. So if you want to run the action again, you can do that. Uh, every time we run the action, you'll get a different variation of all these parts. So I'll be positioned differently, rotated differently, so um, you can check that out. So let's go inside the Shadow 2 folder. I'll just minimize that folder there. And we'll just go down from the top. So I've just got two adjustment layers here that um, just affect the overall appearance of the design. There's subtle changes, so if I turn them off, them off and on you set there so the top one here just adds a little bit of saturation boosts the colors and this one just adds a little bit of contrast and you're going to adjust that contrast just by um, punching in a new number or using the slider here for the opacity okay okay going down uh, most of the time when you run this action you'll probably get you know a few bits and pieces over the subject's face or an area of the photo that you want to be really clear and in focus with no parts interfering. Um, you use this layer here to clean that up. So if you just select this mask here and grab a white brush, so I'm going to flip this from black to white. I'm going to hit B, right click, I'm going to get my soft brush. And if I just brush white into this mask, you'll see that I can just remove any of the parts that intercept with our brushed area. Okay, so all I need to do here is basically just brush over his face, just like that. Okay, uh, but you know you can you can brush away different areas if you want. Uh, so that's a very important layer. Check that out straight away when the action's finished. All right, so going on down, got this folder here called glass. I just call it a glass. Uh, if you turn it on and off, that's basically what houses all the bits and pieces. So if we go inside, uh, it's a Pretty simple setup. We've got our main glass layers here. We've got glass one blurred, glass two, glass three, glass four. I've sort of segmented them off into different colored groups just so it's easier to see what's going on. Glass one blurred are the bigger parts that you know look like they're coming towards the camera. So if I move them around, you can see that there. And you can see that as I move these parts around, they will not overlap with the area that we defined in our mask here. 
because this layer here sits above everything else so this has dominance okay so that area there no parts will intercept uh, that area so um, above each one of these glass layers I've got two two more layers so this one here is just a reflection layer if you move this around it's very subtle effect um, if you look at this left hand corner here this big one as I move it around you see you can just add a little bit of like a reflective look um, you can play around with that uh, if you want to use a solid color to fill those parts just tick this box on so I tick this uh, the eye on here and it will fill it with a solid color and you can just double click on this box and I can like color pick this red just like that or a gray off his jeans so you don't have to use the colors um, that sort of lie within the area that you brush you can sort of decide what colors you use uh, and it's the same setup with uh, each one of these they all have a reflection reflection layer different colors okay uh, if you want a lot more glass or broken up parts whatever you want to call it just hit Control J just select this folder glass hit Control or command J so what that's done now it's duplicated the entire folder so you can move that around you know make things look really hectic okay and uh, what you can also do is move the glass folder around to create like a dispersion effect so I want all these parts to um, shoot off to the right okay so it makes it look like he's sort of flying in from the right to the left if I move this entire glass folder over something like around there okay I've automatically just created um, a dispersion effect but you can control that all individually of course you can just um, move these layers over one by one like that okay and remember you don't need to use all these layers so if you don't want the big blurred ones you can just turn them off okay so now I've just got a whole heap of small parts um, and keep in mind that each one of these layers has a mask as well so you don't have to use all the blur parts that you see um, if I invert this mask so if I just let the mask and hit control I or command I it'll fill it black so now it's hidden so if I grab my white brush B make sure white's the active color if I start brushing around I can just brush on you know which um, big blurry parts I want and to flip between black and white just hit X so I can just remove that X back to white I can brush up here you know okay uh, this layer down the bottom here extra glass I've just added this layer uh, extra glass no color it's basically just that it's shattered pieces uh, let's zoom in here see that they sort of have a bit of a three dimensional look um, they're just grey so you can sort of put them in amongst all the other parts it adds a bit more detail uh, I'm just going to hide this mask okay got this folder here called solid color background if you want to uh, if you do a good job of tracing around your subject you can just switch this folder on and now you can apply a solid color background so um, you know I can just flip that over to white or any color you want okay, so that's the advantage of using uh, of doing a good job when tracing around your subject is that you can uh, if you need a solid background you can do that and also if I want to export um, this design on a transparent background it's just a couple things you need to do uh, you need to turn off the background layer uh, you also need to turn off the background color uh, layer here so now that's all on a transparent background so you can save that out as a PNG file drop that onto your other designs and you're all done uh, if you just wanted to export the parts on their own you see to hide these photo layers hide that one and you can uh, hide this one so now you've just got the broken up parts um, so you can save that out 
Uh, I might turn that off. Turn that back on. Um, so that's all there is to it. It's really simple to use. Um, try combining this with more of my actions because it really just adds another dimension, adds a lot of detail, makes your designs look very professional. Um, just remember that everything can be controlled with these masks. If it's all a bit too hectic, you can turn layers off uh, and you can also control it uh, within these masks or so just brush away patches you don't want. Uh, and just keep in mind that every time you run the action, the variation, the positioning of all these parts will be different. Um, I like to say run the action three to five times and work out what variation I like the best um, and work from there. But you've got enough control in the layer structure to you know manipulate the layers how you want, position them where you want, so it should all be good anyway. Okay, uh, that's it. If you need any help with the action, send me an email and I will uh, help you out. And I hope you have fun using it. Thanks.